Hey guys, this is Nico and today I'm gonna show you how I plan and create my pre-launch and launch campaigns. In the last five years I've been quite successful with those type of campaigns and I'm gonna show you the structure, what are the main key points that will make a pre-launch and a launch campaign very very successful. I'm gonna talk some of the mistakes that many many people make when la launching those campaigns and before starting this video I want to mention that uh, many of those campaigns hit six figures I have some campaigns that hit seven figures and all those campaigns happen in very very short period of time and this is a very very powerful framework unfortunately the framework wasn't invented by me it was invented by a guy called jeff walker so if you want to learn more about those types of campaigns there is a great book by jeff walker called the product launch formula but in this video today i'm gonna take you inside my computer and i'm gonna show you the fundamentals of a pre-launch campaign and a launch campaign now Let's open up my computer and I'm gonna take you inside my computer. So we're inside my computer right now, as you can see, I'm recording this with OBS. So I'm gonna open my Chrome browser and I'm gonna start with the pre-launch campaign. Usually those digital marketing campaigns, they have like two phases. We're gonna talk about the pre-launch campaign and we're gonna talk about the launch campaign. But before starting, we, we need to do a little bit of planning and we need to be a crystal clear what would be the end goal of our campaign, right? And usually many people here are trying to build the email list. Many people are trying to grow the YouTube channel or the, uh, or the podcast subscriber or the social media following. But in 99% of the cases, the very end goal of your campaigns would be to generate sales. So whenever you start planning um, any, any digital marketing campaign, the first fundamental thing you need to be crystal clear on would be how are we getting the sales? So the end of digital marketing, the end of like internet business should always be to generate sales. So we need to be crystal clear on, the, of, on that, that like 80% or maybe like 90% or maybe like 100% of all digital marketing campaigns, all pre-launch campaigns, all launch campaigns, and the idea is to generate sales, right? Uh, so why do we use like a pre-launch campaign? Why not launch straight out of the gate? In many cases, the goal of the pre-launch campaign would be to generate a list or to generate an audience of people who are interested in buying. It would be very, very difficult to sell a product to an audience who doesn't know who you are. So the main idea of like the pre-launch campaign would be to build this audience because it's going to be much easier to sell to somebody who already knows you. So the main idea of the pre-launch campaign is to turn somebody who doesn't know you into somebody who knows you and warm them up into somebody who might be interested in buying, right? And in many pre-launch campaigns, people focus on building the list, right? Building the list. But as a very, very smart marketer, Frank Kern once said, the money is not in the list, the money is in the relationship you have with the list. And here, when we talk about building the list, you can think about it as a going to a bar and just like asking a girl or a boy or somebody who you find attractive for a phone number, right? And there are like many, many cases here. Some people would give you their phone number straight away, but they won't be interested in you. So whenever you invite those people to a date, they would be like always busy and you won't be able to take them to a date. So... Imagine if you have like a really good interaction with somebody, a really good conversation with somebody, when you get the number and when and when everything seems seems to be working, when there is chemis chemistry, there is a much higher chance for you to get the date. So it's not just about building the list, it's about building the list and also building the relationship. 
So you need to be able to do both with your pre-launch campaign. When we talk about building the list, you want to target people who might be interested in your product, right? In the planning phase of the pre-launch or in the planning phase of the whole campaign in general, you must already have an idea of to whom you're selling and what are you selling. If not, we're going to talk about it later on in this video when I'm going to talk about the target market and the offer. But the list, the list should... The, the list should be built in a way so it kind of like chooses the right people, right? And how, how I build the list in my pre-launch campaigns, usually I have a, an opt-in page. And this opt-in page is the page where people can leave their name and email. Then they go to a thank you page. And after they subscribe to my list, they're usually added to a email sequence and they receive a bunch of emails. And the idea of those emails is not to sell anything. The idea of those email, emails is just to establish the relationship and maybe start building up some excitement towards the product. So in the pre-launch campaign, we're not selling anything. We're just warming up the people and we're just kind of like growing our audience. Here, the better the job we do with like our email sequences, the more successful the launch would be. Usually the pre-launch campaigns go between 7 and 30 days. So this is not a rule. You can play around to, with this. But most of my campaigns I did in the past were in that time frame. So like 80% of the cases I think I did between 10 and 14 days. You don't want to have like a longer time frame because people will forget who you are and you're just going to lose the momentum, right? So we move on to the next thing, planning the conversion rate, right? And here I'm just going to give you a rule of thumb. It's not like all, always accurate, but it's just going to give you um, some perspective. Let's say that your email list has a conversion rate of two sales of 1%, right? So let's do some, some calculations here. Right now, we want to plan our pre-launch campaign so we could succeed in, in the launch. And here, the question would be, how big should be the email list? Let's say that the email list is pretty engaged. And let's say that the email list has like 10,000 people on it, right? If you sell a product for a hundred dollars at a one percent conversion rate, you're gonna make one thousand dollars. So is it worth to you to go for like a thousand dollars? Are you gonna do all that work here just to generate a thousand dollars? I'm not sure. That's a question that you need to ask. But here you need to plan the conversion rate and you need to have a kind of like an idea on on the pricing and that's why i like to use one percent conversion rate let's play with some different scenarios let's say that email list is um a thousand people again but your product is thousand dollars so in order to make so at a conversion rate of one percent you're gonna make ten thousand dollars you know and you just need to play with those numbers so if you need to make like twenty thousand dollars here you need to add two thousand people and it is like simple mathematics but before start actually building your campaign think about the numbers you know because it's always about the numbers you'll be very unsatisfied to build a campaign and to generate like a bunch of sales but not to generate any money and this and this will come here at a very fundamental level at figuring out the conversion rate figure it out figuring out the pricing okay so the next thing i'm gonna talk about this is identifying and grow useful assets i talked about on the importance of having an audience and it's gonna be very difficult to sell a product if nobody knows you in order to do this, you need to be extremely, extremely good at, mar at marketing. So 
um, I suggest identify and grow your useful assets in the pre-launch campaign. And what are the useful assets? I think one of the most useful assets on the internet would be the audience you have, right? If you have people who are interested in your brand, in your products, it would be much, much easier to sell. So um, useful assets are the email list, the social media following. Here, when I talk about social media following, I mean uh, YouTube subscribers, Instagram followers, Facebook followers, or any type of followers you have. For example, website visitors could be a useful audience. And those audiences are very, very useful because you can use Facebook ads, YouTube ads, Google ads, TikTok ads, and you can start retargeting those people in your pre-launch and launch campaigns. You know, the warmer the audience, the higher the chance that those people are going to buy. The next useful assets, those are partnerships, you know, and partnerships would be any other people or any other brands or any other assets that could help you either grow the email list or grow your social media following. And it is simple as that. For example, if you go on somebody else's podcast before your launch, if you do a partnership video with somebody else who pretty much has similar following or following interested in your products and services, that will give you a tremendous boost. So if you can think of some partnerships you could uh, do before la launching, that will boost your results. The next super useful asset, those are the affiliates. And usually the affiliates will sell your products uh, for you for a commission, right? So you can set up like uh, affiliates, affiliate profiles for, let's say, some of your partners. And whenever they make a sale for you, you just give them a commission. So the commission could go for like any percentage you negotiate. The higher the percentage you, you give, the better the chances of you just onboarding more and more affiliates. So those are very, very powerful assets. And those assets could make and break a campaign. If you are a nobody, if you don't have an email list, if you don't have a social media following, you're going to struggle a lot. And I say this from personal experience because I've tried launching multiple products. I've tried launching multiple campaigns without an email list, without a social media following. I was going straight to YouTube ads and Facebook ads, super cold traffic. And it was very, very difficult to generate some... Um, some sales or some even like some email subscribers. And usually in many of my campaigns, uh, in order to grow the list, I was using Facebook ads, but you can use uh, social media organic. You can start publishing on YouTube. You can start publishing on Facebook and you can funnel the traffic to your opt-in page. Also, you can use partnerships. Here, I'm going to remove the affiliates because we're not selling anything yet, but you can use the partnership just to grow your opt-in page. And I'm gonna cover this blue and I'm gonna move Facebook ads here. Yeah, so basically here you can use um, any of those tools to bring traffic to the opt-in page. Growing the social media, partnerships, Facebook ads, YouTube ads, organic marketing, content marketing, going to different people, podcasts. There are like millions ways to drive traffic to a page. But at the end of the day, they are either paid or they're free. So make sure to choose whatever works for you better. Now let me see because something is happening with my camera. Yeah, you're going to see this EOS utility. So I'm sorry for that, but I'm just going to continue with the video. My my battery died. Okay, the next thing uh, we're doing, this would be just to figure out our target market. You know, if you have an audience, you already have a target market and you should always start with your warm audience. But if you don't have an audience, you need to figure out the target market. Who are you going after? Are you going after coaches, consultants? Are you going after SaaS companies? Are you going after 
mothers, whatever, just here I advise you to go after super specific target market. And as you can see, number three is the target market and number four is the offer. And there is a reason for that. First, I choose the target market because most of my successful campaigns, we ask the target market what is the product they want to buy and then we create the product. We create the offer based on what people want to buy. We ask people what they want to buy and on step four, we create the product they want to buy. We don't start, oh, this is the product to whom we should sell it to. We reverse engineer that. And we just figure out the campaign structure. We just figure out uh, if we're going to use Facebook ads, if we're going to use YouTube ads. Um, we figure out our email marketing strategy. We figure out how many emails we're going to send, what are going to be the um, main marketing message of each email. So here at the pre-launch phase, we just think about introductionary emails and we slowly start just talking about main key pain points and how we will solve them with our product maybe like later on. But here, I don't want to get into details because there are different ways we can talk about uh, the email marketing campaign. Uh, the next thing uh, I want to talk about, those are the time frames. Usually, a pre-launch campaign goes between 7 and 30 days. You can go less, you can go more. This will depend on your preference. I don't suggest you go more than 30 days because, you know, people are just going to receive a bunch of emails and your email marketing will just become ineffective. So I suggest going for less than 30 days. And when we talk about the launch campaign, the main idea of the launch campaign would be to generate sales. So I suggest you go for seven days or less. Of course, you can go for 14 days, but seven days or less should be a very, very good way. And now I'm gonna move to like the launch campaign. In the launch campaign, those campaigns are pretty powerful because they do three things very, very well. They give the people a reason to buy now. And that reason comes from the urgency. As we all know, this campaign will work only for seven days. You know, we have the offer, we have the product, and in seven days, we're gonna just close the product. And a big chunk of our success would come from telling the market that the product closes in seven days we're gonna be like hey this is our product this is what's gonna do for you but make sure you buy now because we're closing the product on january 1st let's say and this gives us like a very very powerful uh marketing message and just to put this into a perspective like imagine that you have a f friend in town and this friend is living in your city consistently you know if you want to go with this friend, if you want to go out with this friend, you can go out with this friend anytime you want to go out. But now imagine that if your friend is in the city just for like three days and he's like, hey man, I'm in the city for just three days, let's go out. And in the second case, you have a much higher chance to go out with your friend because there is urgency, right? Urgency. Three days or less, seven days or less. We're closing tonight, we're closing tomorrow. Make sure you buy today. And I'll be, you'll be surprised, but many campaigns fail because they, they don't give uh, people a reason to buy now. They don't have urgency and they don't have scarcity, you know? And here I wanna talk about the scarcity a little bit. What is scarcity? This would be when you, open your product just to a limited number of people. And this is also like super powerful and, in, and it will give your marketing um, a different type of messaging. For example, we're gonna say that the product is only open to a hundred people. And on each day of the launch, now let's say that the launch is going for like three days 
And on each day on, on the launch, we're going to be like three days left, you know? And we have only 77 spots left. And we're going to communicate that in our email marketing, in our YouTube ads, Facebook ads, organic social media. You know, here on the second day, we're going to say two days left. Make sure you join today. We have just 23 spots left. And on the last day, we're going to be like, oh, last day, last chance to join. Only nine spots available, you know. And just this within itself is a very, very powerful way to generate sales because people feel like if they don't join, join today, they're missing out, you know. They're missing out and um, they're just going to start joining. But if you could com combine those two things, those three things in a digital marketing campaign, this will be a super, super successful. Of course, it will depend strongly on your target market and the offer, but this will just give you a huge, huge boost in conversion rate. And usually... Many of my launch campaigns were sending the traffic either to a sales page or a webinar page. And after people visit the sales page, they go to a checkout page. And we're using all the channels we have. We're using all the assets to send the traffic to, to send the traffic to, uh, to send the traffic to the sales page. Because the more people we send to the sales page, the better the conversion rate and the more money we're going to make at the very end. So those campaigns both work together. If you already have an audience that are pretty engaged, you can launch straight away. If you don't have an audience, I suggest you going with a pre-launch campaign. And here, usually my sales campaigns are pretty sophisticated we use a uh, facebook ads youtube ads google ads and email marketing to retarget uh, the sales page so during this phase we achieve omnipresence whenever somebody goes on youtube whenever somebody goes on instagram facebook whenever somebody goes to like third party websites they see our offer they see our marketing and we're consistently chasing those people with ads until they buy of course nobody will buy of course not every time everybody will buy but with this omnipresent marketing we just improve our conversion rate because even if, even if you have like a great sales page even if you have like a great uh, offer even if everything looks good people need to see your marketing. For example, a lot of people only rely on email marketing, but let's say that your email list is like, um, let's say that your email list is the size of uh, 8,000 people and it will have a 40% open rate, you know? That means only 400 people will open your emails. Out of this, maybe like, 10% will click on your on on the email you know the email will have like 10% click through rate and this will make 40 clicks you know so you're going to end up with like 40 website visits out of 8000 people but if you use facebook ads you'll be able to retarget those thousand people and a big chunk of them will click because you're gonna be everywhere you know also if you could create some organic social media posts people will go on social media and they're gonna see that your launch is live so those things will just boost your your launch and you'll be able to get more and more conversions yep this was the video for today. Um, this is a very, very long topic, 
but those are just my initial thoughts and this is my experience when it comes to creating launch and pre-launch campaigns if you have any questions let me know in the comments um, if you think this video will be valuable to somebody else make sure to share this video my name is Nico in, in this channel I talk about business wealth and marketing make sure you subscribe to my channel and I'll talk to you soon thank you for watching